Wow. <laughs> He uh, wasn't recording. We've already done this. Yeah, I wasn't recording. Uh, I, I just filmed the entire intro and the the, the sponsor, and I, I was recording on the it camera. It was his best take yet. Mm, but this will be the best, best one out of everything, even the ones where the, the, the mics aren't recording. Okay, so okay. Um, anyway, welcome to the Against All Odds podcast again. I know you guys haven't seen the first intro, but that's because uh, I wasn't recording. There's always something. I don't think we've ever done this perfectly. We, that's we? why That's why most people with a podcast, they have somebody else out there to manage the cameras, to listen to the microphone. You'd think it'd be simple. Just record yourself talking. No. Well, maybe, no, he messes it up every single maybe time. Maybe I'm just really dumb. But it is hard because you have to get both cameras recording all set up. You have to get the microphones recording all good. And you also have to be like, okay, what am I going to talk about? Not mess it up and stuff like that. So... Yeah, you have a lot going that's on. Such, that, that sounds so bad. That's yeah. so easy. Yeah, that's so I, I'm hard. still struggling. Okay, anyway. Get a real job. Welcome to that's the- That's what they're all thinking, I know. I know, I know. Like, really? <laughs> I have to, I'm a, a roofer. I roof. I, I make roofs on houses and stuff. <laughs> Whatever, I don't even know. <laughs> you do know how roofers roof. Okay, okay, okay. Let's back up. Welcome back to the Against All Odds podcast. In this episode, I really want to dive deep into my time right where uh, I dropped out of college all the way until I left for Germany because I have podcasts now where I've talked about how I got recruited to college. I've talked about my entire four years at UC Davis and up until dropping out. And then I've talked about my entire time in Germany. Mm -hmm. Um, But I have not gone in depth and talked about this nine month span between dropping out of college and leaving for Germany. And, and it honestly, was a very fascinating nine months. Honestly, that I would say, to be fair, like I wish I was vlogging during this time because that was probably the, the most roller coaster. This is the most crazy, you know, stories that I have about like my my career, and yeah. it's just not filmed. So it'll be really good to get this um, kind of like up on the up on the podcast and talk about this and go in depth about this. Okay, and then so um, you want you want to talk about what you're bringing to the table in this podcast? <laughs> I think I'm just keeping him company. I don't really know. Nah, it is hard to talk for an hour straight, 45 yeah. minutes straight without any My job is to keep him on track, make sure it's not boring, mm-hmm. ask a few questions, and I maybe mean, do a little jokes. On the office, what do they call it when like you give a joke, like a punch up? They like get the scripts and they like make it funnier. They use they call it punch ups. I don't know. I think that's what they call it. Well, that's yeah. what I'm doing. I mean, no, it really is helpful to have somebody else here while I'm talking about it. Just so it's just not silence if I need to like yeah. be like, wait, what's going on? And you were there for the entire time. So like you have your perspective on everything. Yes. Okay. Um, so let's roll the intro and uh let's get started. <laughs> Okay, before we get into the story, before I really dive deep into this time, um, I need to thank the sponsor of this podcast, Ebonel Skin Cream. Well, Uh, smooth. Yeah, Gucci's pushing up against the camera. Yeah, she's like rubbing. Oh my, Gucci. (gasps) Gucci, Gucci, get get her down. down. Hey. Get down, hey. (gasps) Okay, guys, so before we hop into the podcast, before I talk about this time, I want to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Ebonel Skin Cream and specifically their Lightning Pain Relief Cream. So if you guys haven't heard me talk about this before, it's just a really great pain relief cream that I've been using a ton. My calves have been very sore lately, just training a ton, um, working out a ton. So I've been using on my calves specifically. It feels great. It's just like any other pain relief cream, but instead of being very honestly painful and, and very intense, it's more of a warm, soothing sensation, tingling sensation. And again, what this does uh, differently than a lot of other pain relief creams is that it works to reduce inflammation. So if you guys are interested, you can check them out on their website or on Amazon. Both links will be in the description. And if you guys do want to purchase, be sure to use our discount code against 10. That's the word against and the number is one zero. All right. All good. Ready to go? Yep. Okay. We've had a a couple struggles to start this podcast now. Gucci just hopped up and knocked over a camera. So things have been great. Um, Anyway, but again, thank you to Ebonel for sponsoring out the podcast, sponsoring the podcast. And if you want to check them out, use our discount code against 10. And it smells really good. It does smell good. It just is menthol. Like, oh, I was going to say eucalyptus. It it reminds me of a spa. It smells like a spa. Yeah, it does smell like a spa, but it's like, I feel like it's just the menthol. It's definitely eucalyptus. Give me that. We'll see. Hold on. Ingredients. Um, I guarantee there's some eucalyptus in there. There might be, but there's a ton, so we're not going to go and waste that time. (laughs) Uh, Okay, so 
this is going to be starting back at all the way right after my senior year of college when I was 22 years old. I had just turned 22. He's a baby. Yep, just a baby. And I had just finished my senior season, had a pretty good season, but not the, the full season that I wanted. But I was ready to drop out and to pursue a, a, a professional contract. And I've been, I had that decision made for quite a while. Like I told you, remember, I think I told you back in August of that year, like before the season even started that like, look, I am going to go play pro. I'm trying to remember this whole time in our lives. And it was so long ago. I don't know how you remember any of this. You don't remember any of it? I, I do remember parts of it. But like, I don't remember what you told me in August of really? 2016. I remember 100%. 2015? I, I, I remember we were at your like apartment. And I said, I was like, Mimi, look like. Oh, that's when you wanted to break up with me. No, 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 no. I didn't want to break up with you. <laughs> yes, this is, you did. I'll, I'll tell people exactly what I said. I said, look, Mimi, this is going to be my last, like not even my last full year, but after my senior season, I want to drop out and I, I'm going to go and pursue any opportunity I can and give this really like two to three good years to try to play pro. And I could take me anywhere. It could take me to Scandinavia, Australia. It could take me to Africa, yeah, I remember that. anywhere. And I just said like, look, it's going to be very difficult and I don't know if our relationship can, can make it, but I don't like, if you want to break up now, we can. No. Okay. We have to rewind that day before you, cause you texted me, you're like, you were like, I want to talk to you about something. And I was at my apartment and I was like, oh my God, like, why does he want to talk? And that scared me because you never want to talk about anything. <laughs> and then I was like, is it bad? Is it bad? And then you texted me on your way over and you asked if, you, if, if I wanted Chipotle, if I wanted you to pick up Chipotle for me, because you were getting Chipotle. And I was like, oh my God, he's offering to get me food right now. Like he's obviously going to give me bad news because he's trying to like, like, I don't know. Make butter it, you up. Yeah. Butter me up before you give me bad news. So I was like, right when I got that text from you, I was like, oh my God. I was like, he wants to get me Chipotle. And I remember you came over and then you ate your Chipotle like super fast. I wasn't hungry at all. Cause I was like having anxiety. Cause I was like, he's going to break up with me. And then you told me in my mind, it was more like, I don't think this is going to work. Like we should just like rip the bandaid off kind of thing. And I was like, what? Because all along I knew you wanted to go pro. Like mm -hmm. I knew you wanted to do this. So I never thought it would be, I don't know, like hard. But then you were like super pessimistic about it. I don't know if you saw other people going through it and like they didn't work out. I, I don't just, know. I mean, you were I, just like really I like. I was realistic. I was like most long distance relationships don't work. This is funny because every time you say I'm pessimistic and I say no, I'm just realistic. You'd like laugh at that. And that's exactly what you just said. Uh, yeah. Like, no, I was realistic. I mean, yeah, I guess. But I wasn't like being like hopelessly romantic. Like, oh, our relationship's going to make it through no matter yeah. what. But I was like, look, it, it probably won't. Like, most likely it's not going to work out. Like, yeah, I, I remember would love, you saying that. I was like, what? I was like, I would love to try. And I would love if it did work out. And I, I mean, if you want to go through this, but it's not going to be easy. And I could not even be in America for 10 years. Like, you have no idea. And I basically was just upfront about that. And I said, if you want to, you know, stick with, by my side while I do this, let's do it. But if you don't like, tell me now, because I'm going to do this no matter what, like your decision will not affect what I do. And, and that's Shelly, everybody. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> but romantic. I, yeah, no, it's so romantic, but honestly, I, I mean, to be, to be honest, yeah. the only thing that really mattered at, at that time and even almost a little bit now is my career. Even though we're engaged. Even though we're I engaged. I mean nothing. <laughs> That's what he <laughs> just said. it's not like you mean a lot to me. I'm so happy. And obviously no, what you mean, great. you're saying it in a bad way, but what you mean is that nothing is going to affect your decision mm. to play. Nothing's going to come in between me and yeah. soccer at that time in my life. Like, and I think, I think, cause I remember that day being very, very sad. And I think that you just probably presented it in a very pretty negative harsh. way. It wasn't yeah. negative, just harsh. You just harsh. come over and you're like, look, I'm going to go. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know how long yeah, I'm going to be gone is, for. So I'm not, I'll I'm, see you later. I'm not the type of person who's like, I love you so much. And I want to be with, like, I want this to go on forever. Yeah. Like it was more like, look, this, this is the deal. This is what I'm going to do. Yep. Yes or Shelley. no. You want to be with me? Yes or no. That's how you propose too. <laughs> do you want to do it or not? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's been six years. Yes or no, maybe let's do yeah. this. No. So yeah. So I, I honestly was very upfront about it. I said, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I want to do. Um, and then I went through, we ended up staying together. You were like, yeah, I want to stay with you. I want to be together. I want to, you know, do this adventure. I was like, look, if you're going to be the next David Beckham, I don't want to like lose my chance. Little do you know that soccer players don't make anything. <laughs> yep. I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so I went through my senior year. I had a pretty good senior year. 
Uh, I had like my senior season, I had like, I think it was like four or five goals, but I had goals of getting like 10 goals that season. And I really needed to have a, a standout season in order to get drafted. Like I it was, thought it was a standout season. Yeah. But it was like, I had seven goals my junior year and it was ramping up and up and up. And I really needed this big senior year to have 10 goals, first team, big West. And I, I needed that in order to get drafted because like I, I wasn't, you know, my team didn't make the national tournament. So I needed to be like really stand out. Why did that happen? Just, I mean, for, I put a lot of pressure on myself. And again, like, I mean, you're not always going to, your, your seasons aren't always going to be great, better, better, better. I mean, Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo and Messi constantly have those, but that's why they're the best in the world. They're so consistently continually to get better and better and better. But I mean, in the real world, it's like, you know, so many factors are out there and like, you can have these goals and aims of having be the best season yet. And, but sometimes you just don't. Like yeah. so I put, a, I think I put, you know, mistakes. If you're asking about mistakes, I put a lot of pressure on myself. I think too much where it almost became negative where it was like, if we would have win and score, and I've talked about this in a video, but if we would win and score, but I didn't have any goals, I was mad. Yeah. I sh it, it was just like, kind of like that negative energy. And I don't know. I mean, who knows? Maybe if I was have more positive energy, I could have had an even worse season or whatever and, or put less pressure. It could have been worse. But like, you just never know. Well, it's interesting because the other years, like you weren't in your head, you weren't like trying to go pro right then. And it, yeah. you know, that wasn't on your mind. So I'm wondering if like you would have played better if you didn't have this more relaxed. Like, yeah. Yeah. Because like so. your junior year, you were like killing it sophomore year. Yeah. You know, I think so. But like, I mean, Weird. I mean, you live and you learn. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so like I was still right at that border and I had some MLS scouts actually like for specifically Matt Martin, uh, at the time was a, the scout for Kansas city, sporting Kansas city and the MLS. And he basically had approached me and Ramon. I mean, Ramon was one of the top, uh, prospect going into the MLS combine and MLS draft, but he was also talking to me a ton saying like, look, you can play pro. Um, I'm going to like, he was like putting my, in the word into the MLS committee to get me into the, the combine and mm -hmm. all that stuff. And I was like right at the border. Uh, but I, I'm sure there's a lot of other players right at the border as well, but I no, didn't you get were the only one. Yeah. But basically <laughs> I'm the only player. Yeah, here's the list for the draft. But from what I heard and you never know how true this is, but from what I heard when they, they pick like a hundred players, hundred or whatever number of players to the combine, I was like five or so places away from getting selected. Oh, so I mean, so annoying. that's just how, I mean, it's tough. It's very hard. And, yeah. and so, uh, yeah, but anyway, that we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but after the senior season, I really had this confidence to drop out because I had played and had four good years at Davis. I had uh, my college coaches telling me like, we have co uh, connections with Sacramento Republic. We have connections with the Portland Timbers too. We can get your foot in the door. I had a successful season with the San Jose Earthquakes U23 team. And the coach was telling me that I could go play pro and he'd help me out. I was having this MLS scout tell me that he wanted to help me like get my foot in the door into the pro world. The, the day the season ended, I was contacted by an agent his name was Sam. I remember that. Yeah, he so like messaged you. Messaged me and said he had tons of opportunities and connections with some USL teams and over in Scandinavia. So I was getting a lot of opportunities. I always say to not just like drop, uh, you know, to drop everything in your life and head over to Europe and try to play pro. You have to follow the opportunities mm -hmm. and create the opportunities, you know, yeah, from I playing that. well. You had like a lot mm -hmm. going on. And it, it almost, I don't want to say I was naive because I honestly had, and I'll talk about all, all the opportunities, but I had about three or four combines lined up, some of which were invite only combines. I had the draft, which I was still really hoping for. Um, I had uh, this agent telling me he had all these teams that he could send me to. I had the MLS scout telling me that he was going to help me out and send me to some teams. And I also was doing my own stuff and sending out my highlight video and CV and sending out emails to USL clubs and other clubs. And I had myself had procured about two or three opportunities that said, yeah, you can come into preseason. So at that time, like right around my end of my senior year, or actually about a week after, once I was doing all this, I, I really had like seven or eight teams that I had like were interested in me. Yeah. This is all coming back to me now. Yeah. I remember this. Yeah. Cause I remember like, I wasn't worried at all. I was like, Oh my God, everybody wants him. Mm -hmm. He has all of these opportunities. And, and what I didn't realize too, it's like, as you go up and up and up, like, you know, if a college coach is talking to you or let's say I'll go all the way back, if a club coach is talking to you, it's a very secure, you know, you're 16 years old and a club coach is like, yeah, I want you for my team. 
most likely it's going to work out. If a college coach is talking to you like, yeah, I'm interested in you, you know, it's, it's not, it's definitely not for sure, but there's a pretty good chance he's interested, you know, and things might work out there. Mm -hmm. And then you go up and up and up into the semi-pro world and it's like, eh, you never know. And with the pro coaches, they're interested in 300 players sometimes yeah, before preseason. Yeah, now I don't even believe anything unless there's like a contract yeah. behind it. I mean, the amount I probably have in terms of opportunities to actually lead out and pan out, it's probably 10 to one. Yeah. For every 10 opportunities that kind of pop up, one actually pans out and works out. And I didn't realize that it was that low until I actually experienced this year. So yeah, I mean, it was definitely a culture shock, but, and to go in depth about it, um, I talked about Matt Martin. He said he was from Kansas city, sporting Kansas city scout. So I was talking with him, um, really, you know, texting or calling him probably like once a week, just like any new I updates. I remember you like became best friends with this guy and I was mm -hmm. like, where did he come from? Yeah. And I think about a week or two after my season ended, uh, there's just some like exhibition random games for like some semi pro stuff. It was like off season at that time. Cause it was like November and the Ventura County fusion, which was a semi pro team was playing against, uh, I think it was like a, a Mexican U 23 team. So it was like a, a professional first division Mexican team, but they're U23 side. Mm -hmm. And it was playing in Southern California. I was at that game. Were you? Yeah, my whole family went. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, you scored like, didn't you score like the... No, no, no. This is different. End? You weren't at this game. I was at this game. No, no, no. You're thinking of actually playing the Mexican national team. Oh. This is a different this game. This is a different one? Mm -hmm. I didn't go. So after, no, no, no. So after about a week or two after my season ended, there was this random opportunity down in Southern California, basically Ventura with the Ventura County Fusion, but it was like more of like a professional game. So they, the Ventura County Fusion was had this opportunity to play a U23 side of a first division team. I, I think it was the Cholos. It was the team yeah, that the Rubio, the Rubio plays for. Yeah. Um, I didn't score in this game. You didn't score in this you're game. You're thinking of the Mexican U17 but national team. I remember team. this game. No, you don't. You're, you're thinking of the Mexican I remember U Cholos. No, you were, it was the- No, because I remember then there's another one that was the, the national team of Mexico, but like the younger people. Yeah. But I don't think you were at this game. Okay, I but do, I remember it. You might remember me talking about it, but you weren't at this game. I was there. <laughs> anyway, so we were playing the Cholos, the, the U21 and U23 team, and then the Ventura County Fusion, which is a PDL team, a USL League 2 team, they wanted to kind of like pump up their team or like make a... like. Get, basically recruit pro players to kind of just play in the off season mm -hmm. and in this game. So they had like Ivan Mirkovic was playing, uh, Gabrielle, who was at the Republic, some other play, a lot of Republic players. Illegal? No, it's off season. doesn't matter. Oh, okay. So it was like a lot of Republic <laughs> players, a lot of, uh, LA galaxy two players. And they needed, I basically was like Matt Martin. This is the, how you have to create opportunities for yourself. Matt Martin was like, look, I'm going to go down to this game and watch and scout and recruit. Um, do you want to come with me? and bring your boots and I'll try to get you like some minutes in the game as a right back. Cause I really want to see you as a right back. Yeah. I wasn't there. This is the one that you took, you rode with him the whole mm -hmm. way. Okay. Wow. So that's interesting. Yeah. I was right. Well, yeah, but just this wait. is, this is what I'm talking about in terms of like creating opportunities for yourself. It's a six hour drive down to Ventura. Yeah. You rode with a stranger all who the I, way down who to I had, Ventura. Who I pretty much just met yeah. and I rode all the way down with him in his car to Ventura just for an opportunity to maybe get some minutes in the game. And it was like, he was like, look, I can maybe get you 10, 15 minutes at the end of the game. But I went, I wasted an entire weekend, not wasted because it worked out, but I, I spent an entire weekend. We left on Saturday morning. We drove all the way down to Ventura. Uh, Matt, like I had to buy my own hotel room and some stuff because, you know, it's legal yeah. stuff with agents and players. But basically, um, it basically he was like kind of like treating me to this weekend and up down in LA in Ventura. And then on Sunday we played in this game and it was with, like I said, with Ivan and Gabrielle and mm -hmm. like a whole bunch of players who were already at the pro level and they wanted to see me as a right back or Matt specifically wanted to see me as a right back. And Matt Martin talked to the coaches and everybody and was like, yeah, yeah, Matt can get the second half, uh, all the whole second half. So I was like, awesome. The right this back of the team's like, what the heck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I, I played in this game and I did really, really well. Actually, I had a really good performance at right back. And I, had I remember it, that. I hadn't played right back in like five years and since like high school when I would just go in there when my club team needed me. Mm -hmm. So like I had really no idea what I was doing, but I was kind of playing instinctually. You know, if my center back was telling me to step, I would step doing all this stuff instinctually, but I had a really good game. And afterwards, um, I not only impressed the head coach of the Ventura County fusion, but I also impressed Matt and Matt was like, yeah, I really think you did well. I'm really going to help you out. You know, I'm going to talk to some teams for you, but basically that opportunity, it's, it's taking advantage of those things that don't seem like opportunities, but really are. Um, 
and then anyway, I was continuing to talk to Sam, the agent. Uh, he was like basically saying like, I want, he wanted me to sign with him, but I was holding off. I wanted to be sure, but he was like, I can get you opportunities in Scandinavia. And then I, cause I had a lot of other opportunities coming up. And then, so, you know, I stayed fit during this time. I continued to work out a ton. I continued to train a ton. I went back to Portland, um, just to get some individual training at home, uh, and just prepare for these combines that were, that were to come. So then after that game with the Ventura County fusion, I then went to, back to California for the San Jose Earthquakes invite only combine. And this was like right before Christmas. So this was like just before the, the Christmas break. I feel like we should be like reading your journal while we do this. That would be smart. I actually have, yeah, my journal, like I wrote all this, my Path to Pro journal. Yeah. And I still actually, actually I write in the second edition now because I filled it all up. Um, but yeah, so I went back to California. I did the combine with, this was the San Jose Earthquakes first team. And they invite a ton of like, 40 college seniors all around the country or the state of California that they kind of hand select that they want to see in person. So like Jim Demez was there who now plays in Costa Rica first division. What is that name? Jim Demez. Jim? 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 Yeah, Jim. Jim he, so he he played for Sacramento State and now he plays in first division. That's a Costa, cool name. Yeah, he's a great guy too. Um, but he now plays in the first division of, of Costa Rica and he's been in Costa Rica for three or four years now. Um, and then like, uh, Ramon was there as well. So Ramon Martin del Campo, who now plays for Las Vegas lights, uh, a lot of people who senior year that you play against, you know, from guys from USF, from Cal, uh, from San Diego state, from all these teams, even all the way over from West Virginia, Penn state players. So like all these players are there and it's the best of the best. And you basically play a full combine. 11 v 11 for a weekend and the head coaches of the mls san jose earthquakes team are just there taking notes and stuff um so it's pretty cool and i think actually from that combine chindam jim who now plays in costa rica this guy he got uh i think he got drafted by the earthquakes so i he got an opportunity from that um, it didn't, and nothing panned out for the rest of us. Nothing panned out for me there, but it's just, yeah. again, it's another opportunity <laughs> that you kind of go, you test it out, you do this thing, you get on somebody's radar and you never know. Cause if they're mm -hmm. looking for a right back, you know, or if they're looking for this type of player or whatever, it could work out for you. Um, so that was one combine. I, I had high hopes again. It's always hard. You go to these things and you're so used to like having success, 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 but you're starting to realize now at the pro level, you're not getting callbacks instantly. It's not as easy as it yeah. was to even get a division one college scholarship, which is very a difficult thing to do. And to get a pro contract, it's even 10 times harder. Even to get invited into a preseason is much harder than I was really envisioning it to be. Um, Anyway, and then I went and basically had Christmas. So I was back in Portland for Christmas with my family. Mm -hmm. I think you were back in San Diego with your family and stuff. That sounds about right. <laughs> Are you completely lost? Well, where else would I be for Christmas? Yeah. Um, and then it was kind of like, okay, this January was going to be big because that's when the MLS draft is. That's what I was really hoping for because even if you don't go to the combine, I didn't get invited to the combine, but if you don't go to the combine, you can still get drafted. You, you know, they can still draft you and all this stuff. Uh, I put a lot of emphasis in the draft, which really I think I shouldn't have because like it's very important, but most players that even yeah. were drafted ended up not signing for those respective teams. You know, like Cameron. Or they, they sign, but then they get like moved down. Yeah, a lot. Of, yeah, a lot of teams will push them down to their their second team in the USL. Uh, I think from like the guys who I know who got drafted. Yeah, I think like maybe one or two end up actually signing first team contracts, mm -hmm. and the I rest. I remember watching the draft. Yeah. And like Cameron Awasa, he, uh, he got drafted by the Montreal Impact mm -hmm. and then ended up with Sacramento. So like that's, you know, he was there for like a month and then they, I was they gonna released say, him. Like, I wonder what the percentage is for people who actually stay and play with the teams they're drafted to. It's low. I feel like a lot of it's just like, yeah, it's like low, it doesn't but last. like, I don't want to like hate on it yeah. being like, oh, the draft's stupid because it creates opportunities. Yeah. It's, it's great for your resume. If you can get drafted, go for it, do it and pursue it because you know, stuff is going to work out and just having that on your resume that you were drafted will open up more doors in the future. So I don't want to say it's stupid. Yeah. A lot of the guys don't sign for their teams that actually draft them. It's just but, weird. Cause you'd think like being drafted, you would be, yeah, be signed for getting, a team. Being drafted means nothing. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've it means, learned that. it means nothing until you put pen to paper and a lot of players, a lot of people don't realize that, mm -hmm. but yeah, until you put pen to paper, that's when it's real. But yeah, you know, I was at home, I was training by myself doing all the same type of trainings I was, was doing. Was this the Christmas when you got like snowed in? Yes. No, 
Is that the next one? I mean, I was. You're always a little bit snowed in in Portland. Like, no, but you were literally snowed in for like ten days or something. No, that was the next one, but or oh, okay. actually a couple ones later before St. Louis. Uh, okay. So that was like 2016, but this is like going into tw- the year 2015. It's all blending together. I got it all sorted up here. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I was training by myself, doing a ton of work, staying fit because I just was like my mentality and it's still my mentality today and I still think you should have this of you never know when that agent or Matt Martin or one of these teams is gonna go, Matt, I have an opportunity for you here. Can you leave today? And you go and then you need to be game fit. I actually just was talking with Anthony Legend, mm-hmm. one of my old teammates from last year with the Roughnecks, and I was telling him like, look, even this time with the USL season kind of like hopefully starting back up, there's gonna be some players that aren't gonna wanna play, you know, that just don't yeah. feel comfortable with their families or newborn babies or whatever. Be a hundred percent game fit right now, or as close to game fit as you can be. Is that why he was just doing a bunch of push-ups on his Instagram story? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, probably. <laughs> but he's saying that he's feeling really fit now because you just never know. I mean, all it takes is one team to have both of their left backs, or even one left back, say, "You know what? I'm not going to play this year," and then they need a left back. So, and if he's not game fit, you waste an opportunity. But if you are, it could mm. be it could lead to your next uh, next contract. Um, so anyway, going into this next year, the 2015, we're heading into January now of 2015. God, Gucci's oh my pushing God. up with the camera. Um, sorry. She's like rubbing her cheek against the lens. Yeah. But we're going into 2015 now, January. So this was like when the combine was happening, when the MLS draft was happening. I had so much motivation to train as well because I was, you know, to be honest, a little jealous of these guys that were at the combine and and jealous of watching the draft at home and and kind of feeling that like not hearing your name called and and getting a little bit of FOMO and feeling a little bit left out because I think that's understandable. I had a lot of friends. I knew a lot of my old teammates that were in the combine and in the drafts. So I was uh, like, to be honest, like pretty jealous about that. Um, so I was having really good training sessions and I remember like specific workouts, even like going late at night to go work out and feeling extremely motivated and having some of the best workouts ever because I wanted to prove to myself that I was at the same level of these guys that were at the combine. You wanted the revenge body. A little bit. Yeah. But it was all focused around like soccer, soccer, soccer. I want to sign the pro contract. Um, and then, uh, the next, uh, opportunity I had was actually in Florida. So do you remember this one? Yes. It was the huge combine. Yeah. The info sport combine. Yep. And I don't want to hate on it, but it was the worst combine I've ever <laughs> been to a hundred. I like to be honest, terrible combine. Absolutely terrible. And Weren't they even the fields bad? Oh uh, yeah. Like I, and it might, and I, I will say that was back in 2014 in December of 2014 or January of 2015. I think it was January, 2015, but, and so it's been five years now they could completely restructure it, completely change it. But when I was there, it was absolutely terrible because we played at that. these parks with like then the worst part is they made you feel like it was like very competitive to be selected for the info sport um because you had to apply for it you had to send in your cv you had to send in your highlight video it took like a week and they finally got back to you and said yes you have been selected and then they would tweet you out on their twitter and on their instagram matt sheldon from uc davis selected for the info sport combine and they had a lot of big name players that like just weren't at the level of the the actual mls combine mm-hmm. that went like players that had you know played at top D1 schools and you were like, wow, this is a big deal. But then you get there and they only are tweeting out and letting you know of like the top 40 or 50 players. So you there's know? 400 other Yeah, people. and there's, 400, there's honestly about 400 to 500 players at this combine. And I think there was like one MLS coach and there was like 10 or 11 USL coaches there. And, but like it was just a week. It was a terrible field. You're playing yeah. with like $20 Walmart, Walmart, Walmart balls at times. You had players on there that had like the shin guards over the socks and like the basketball shorts that can't have never played a day in their life. Yeah. Was, I remember you like, cause it was a couple days, wasn't it? It was a, it was like a full weekend. It was like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Cause I remember like after the first day you're like, uh, this isn't going anywhere. Yeah. Because there's a diff- I mean, you go into the combine with the, I just had done the San Jose earthquake earthquakes, MLS combine, like, or the invite only combine where the worst player there was still a successful D one player. 
yeah. a top guy from his school. And the best guy there is somebody who's going to get drafted in the MLS first round, you know? So everybody is like top players. You're, you just come from that. You have the entire San Jose Earthquakes coaching staff watching the entire time, you know, talking with you, doing all this stuff. You're getting food after every single day. Uh, you go from that to an open combine where anybody can show up. It's just, it's hard. And it's 400 people now and you're playing with guys who literally your teammates and you're doing something you pass and then they like it's i don't i I don't want to sound bad but some of these players were shit they were absolute shit like had never played before in their life and it's a little frustrating why do you think you're going to play pro if you've never played before you know at like a high level and again it's that's what open trial is everybody has an equal opportunity but it is a little frustrating And one thing about that, because I remember at the beginning of like you doing all this, I used to always think like, oh, if you're playing with bad people, then you'll be like really good and you'll stand out. But it's the opposite Mm -hmm. because they're bad. They can't give you the support that you need in order to be good. You don't get the good passes and crosses and stuff. Mm -hmm. So you actually can't play well. Yeah. And even defensively, if you if you're a defender and your whole team is terrible and you're just getting wave after wave of attack, you're shut out. You're not going to get any shutouts. You're not going to get as much recognition. Mm -hmm. Your team needs to do well in order for you, all the individual stuff will be taken care of. Because if you're a forward even, I mean, half your, you're never going to take the ball or I shouldn't say never. You're rarely going to take the ball from your own half, dribble everybody and score. It's going to be a combination up, a cross in, or yeah. a good combination behind for you to score. If you don't have any of those teammates to do that for you, it's much harder for you to show. But I will say, like, I did show, like, obviously any coach there can be like, okay, this guy's a D1 player, this guy's a D1 player. But it, it yeah, not that many opportunities I, I from what I've heard and all the other players who you meet there and talk to who are good players and have played pro before, had played uh, PDL or had played college they were just as frustrated as me. And like, they're like, bro, this is, this is rough. And I, and there was actually a couple of guys who I met. Um, they were even on my team that I had just done with the San Jose earthquake combine with. And they were like, bro, we literally just came from the earthquakes combine. And now we're here. Like, what is this? You know, like, mm-hmm. kind of like having that little, like defeated kind of sense to it. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was in the beginning of January. So I was there for a weekend in Florida. And again, I remember your dad went with you too. Mm-hmm. To like he's so supportive. Like, again, I mean, you have to buy your own plane ticket all the way to Florida from California and your own hotels. And Andre Brown stayed with me in my same hotel room to that. try to save money. Yeah. But again, I mean, you fly into Florida, it's buying a hotel room, f- flying back. It's, it's a lot. And again, at the same time, though, I don't want to knock any opportunity because you never know. All it takes is for one of those U.S. Hill coaches or one of those coaches to be like, you know what? I know it's terrible conditions. I know everything, but I like this kid. I want this kid to come to preseason with me, you know? Mm-hmm. So I, if looking back on it, I would still go to that combine. I still think you should go if you can afford that. But it's just, you know, looking back on just it. don't expect much. I can't expect much. And I went in there with high expectations, thinking it was going to be very high quality. Um... Uh, anyway, oh, the camera just stopped. Let me, uh, I was going to say, cause we're at 28 pause. minutes. Okay. So then after the info sport combine, um, let me guess, let me guess what's next. Well, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about, no way off. <laughs> <laughs> so far off. Really? So unbelievably far off. <laughs> Dang it. Okay. At least it's the same year. <laughs> okay. You're in the same year, which is good. Um, no, but at this time in January, it's kind of in a little bit of a lull. Because at that time, back in 2015... That was my second guess. Lol. Yeah. And in 2015, the USL seasons, the preseasons aren't even starting up until about March 1st. So it's now end of January. And I've done a couple combines. I'm staying fit. But now you're in this awkward time of like, there's no teams really starting up. I need to stay fit. Um, but I don't really know what to do. So I'm continuing to send out tons of emails. I literally have the spreadsheet of all the USL teams that I know that I've gotten from Matt Martin, that I've gotten from my agent, any email I can get, or just Googling and just like researching and researching and finding email. You know, I have this spreadsheet of emails that I've been hitting up, messaging, emailing my CV highlight video and trying to get stuff. And actually from that time, you know, I'm continuing to train I'm continuing to work out, um, and just sending out emails. I got, uh, the Oklahoma city coach and Matt Martin also sent a recommendation as well to this coach. And he pretty much said like, yeah, we would love to have you in for preseason. Do you remember that? Yeah. What a flake. It wasn't a flake. (laughs) I mean, a pretty crazy situation happened. I just remember it didn't 
work out. Yeah. And, and again, like, so basically the Oklahoma city coach has said, Matt, we are extremely interested in you. We got a glowing recommendation from Matt Martin, the, the MLS scout. We would love to have you in for preseason. You know, our preseason starts in end of February, early March, you know, like we're it, it very like personalized and like we've been talking back and forth. Um, so I was like, okay, sweet. That's a backup. You know, we're just destined to come to Oklahoma. Yeah, I know. Oklahoma just likes me for some yeah. reason. Um, and then I also had sent out like, uh, I think Sacramento as well. They said the same exact thing. Mm-hmm. Like they, they, it wasn't as interested, but it was like, okay, yeah, we, if, uh, we would love to have you out for a preseason or to come in on trial. So they basically sent that to me. And that was from like, uh, my head coach at Davis, Dwayne Schaefer. He just messaged them and talked to Precky at the time there. And Precky said, yeah, Matt can come in on, on trial or for our preseason, we'll let you know. And so I had those two and I still had some other opportunities. My, I still had Sam, the agent saying like, I can send you to, to Scandinavia. Just let me know when you're ready. You know, mm-hmm. like I'm going to send you to Scandinavia. So I, again, even though like, a lot of the combines were already done, even though that I felt like I had missed some opportunities or some stuff was like passing me by, I still felt like I had a lot of opportunities at this time. So again, workouts were great. My training was great. I was trying to stay as fit as possible as things are going well during this time. Um, and then I start to go and time starts to pass and week after week are coming. I'm continuing to train and continuing to stay fit. We're pushing all the way through February now. It's late February and all of a sudden I'm starting to see some preseason start up. Oklahoma City was starting up. Sacramento Republic was yeah, starting like, up. Where's and I was like, invite? whoa, wait a second. Like, uh, why am I not, why uh, I haven't gotten any emails yet. So then I emailed the, the same email uh, from Oklahoma city. I talked to the Sacramento and Sacramento pretty much just said, look, we got a pretty core group of guys right now. We're going to focus on this and we'll let you know. And then Oklahoma city had said, uh, like basically the guy that was recruiting me, he got into some legal trouble back in England and he was gone. So my connection to Oklahoma city, the guy who wanted to bring me in all of a sudden got fired. Like not, he got, I think he got fired or basically (laughs) something, but so it's just crazy how like you're going to have some opportunities and stuff just doesn't work out for you, you know? And so then all of a sudden I went from having a couple opportunities to nothing. And I remember this panic of like, those were my last two kind of opportunities. I don't know what to do. And I still had this agent, Sam message me like, Hey, whenever you're ready, I can, you know, get an opportunity over, over for you in Scandinavia. So I messaged him now saying like, look, I don't think stuff is really panning out in the USL. Uh, I would love to explore an opportunity over in Scandinavia. And he was like, okay, uh, just a second. And he got back to me like a few hours later and he said, uh, this was like Thursday. And he says, can you buy a ticket to Iceland tomorrow? Is that Scandinavia? Yeah. Okay. That doesn't really count. Okay. It's not, I guess, <laughs> I don't know if it was considered Scandinavia, but Iceland. So literally it was Thursday and he said, can you buy a ticket to Iceland tomorrow? And I was like, uh, yeah, I think I can do that. And I bought a one-way ticket to Iceland. And this was like February, end of February, like February 22nd, I think, February 23rd of 2015. I remember this. And I flew out there and um, it, to the agent's credit, everything, you know, he did, he did great. I was picked up at the airport by the head coach. The head coach brought me over to a, a hostel. I stayed in a hostel with a few other guys that were on trial as well. Um, everything was pretty good. It was in Reykjavik uh, with Throtter, Thracha Reykjavik, I think was the team name. Thracha Reykjavik. They played in the second division of Iceland that year or that season. Um, but which is crazy. So I got in the hostel. I was there. He's like, yeah, a couple trialists will also be joining you as well. Two other ones, uh, a Canadian and American. I'm like, okay, cool. Other English speaking guys I can kind of talk to. And then one of the guys from Penn State, Jordan Tyler, who I had, he was on my team at the InfoSport Combine, just walks in the door. And I was like, whoa, Jordan, what's up? He's like, Matt? And we were on the same team in the info sport just to show how small the world is. So we were talking and then we had another Canadian guy and we got, we all got along really well. Uh, But it was basically us three fighting for like this one spot they had left on Throtter. Classic. And to be honest, to be fair, like I didn't have a good trial at all. uh, Technically it was my first trial as a pro, you know? I've been to combines, I've been to other stuff, but this is my first trial. But see, I think your agent kind of like, I feel like his advice to you like got in your head. 
because I, I don't remember exactly what happened oh, but I remember yeah. someone told you like hey the coach really likes it when you do this and when people play like this yeah so I feel like you try to play the way that the coach wanted you to play instead of the way that you play yeah and I was you're like right. why did they tell you that you're right like, they My, have said he that. said that he really liked fast aggressive wingers to yeah. like, with the ball and this was back when I was still tri- trialing as a winger and so it's a little true like I mean I mean I'm the one who messed up I'm the one who didn't have the best trial it's all me but it did a little bit I was like yeah. I was like I need to kind of like take this guy one on one every single time yeah, I don't and think, my feedback yeah. after was like look you're a great player we just thought that you were a little bit too direct and we <laughs> want aggressive. we wanted a little bit more like european let's hold the ball let's you know let's rest a little bit let's let's play a, a very scandinavian type of play again i don't know if iceland's con- considered scandinavian but we'll find out they for play sure. very european of like it's in college super direct super athletic go 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 for if you're not going towards the goal what are you doing and here it was like, you know, you attack and how it should be. You attack when you have the opportunity to attack. You well, hold and you, and you play the right option, but it was hard. <laughs> I could have told you that. Oh, okay, well, yeah, in hindsight's 2020. I'm just kidding. I remember this time because I remember I started crying at the gym. When? When I was with Danny at the gym because it was when you were in Iceland <laughs> and we were working out. It was because I was living there. And we were at, at Ramble working out and I started crying. He's like, why are you crying? I was like, cause Shelly's going to move to Iceland. <laughs> and he was like, he's like, look, if Shelly gets signed by Iceland, we'll go to the first game together. Like we'll both fly out there. And we like made a pact that we would both go to Iceland for your first game. But then you came back. So <laughs> big deal. Yeah. and then after that, I learned to like, it like nothing's official until you actually sign. Don't something. get too high on the highs. Yeah. Don't get too low on the lows. So I was like Iceland. And it just like hit me when I was working out. I was like, oh my God. That's what I was saying in our pre-talk. I'm like, you don't know where I'm going to end up, so I don't I know. know about. I but don't that was know about the first one that was like far away and, and like big and real. Yeah. And now, like, if you were like, yeah, I'm going to go to China, I'm like, all right, see ya. Yeah. Because I know that it's not official until it's actually official. So mm-hmm. now yeah. I don't care at all. Yeah. You can go wherever. Um, but yeah, uh, to talk about that Iceland trial. So yeah, I flew in. I flew into Iceland. That was, I think, like one of my second or third time outside of the U.S. I've been in Mexico. I've been to Bahamas, but like other than that, like I hadn't really been outside of the U.S. Um, and, and then you hadn't gone to Vancouver yet. That was after, right? That was after. Okay, yeah. yeah. So that was your. Yeah, that was like one of the first times. Yeah, one of the first, especially playing soccer. You were just a baby. So I was over there by myself. I had a good. I was in a hostel, and I just remember like there was like three. It was February in Iceland, so there's ice everywhere, snow everywhere. It was freezing. Yeah, it was um, dark. It I was remember dark. your. your trial was like it was like dark or something or well, yeah, inside it at, yeah it was at night and also inside but yeah. like it was freezing <laughs> and uh i remember like there was the sun would rise at about 11 and it would set at like three so like there was like four hours of daylight the entire day uh so that was tough um especially coming from california it was a little tough uh but anyway so i was yeah. there I had a, the coach was great he was english uh, I really felt like I did well. Like I felt like I was one of the top five guys on the team. I thought I had a really good trial, but it, I, again, it wasn't like my best trial. I definitely took guys on a little bit too much. I was very direct, still very college style. Um, I should have relaxed a little bit, played simple a few more times and then gone and attacked mm-hmm. when I should have. I think like 80% of the time I had the ball, I was going straight for goal attacking. It should have been more like 50, 50 or, you know, 80, 20, the other way. Uh, That's why you always have to play the way that you play. I know. L- should listen to your gut. Should listen uh, to me. Yeah. <laughs> listen to your stupid agent. Yeah. Um, but it was good. I mean, like you played, we played outside in the snow, it was freezing. We played in these huge like indoor facilities, which has a full field inside. I got into like two or three exhibition games because I was there for like a week or two. Mm-hmm. I think it was like 10 days. So I got into a couple exhibition games. I trained with them, you know, every time they would train. I got to explore Reykjavik with some of the guys um, like Jordan and this other guy from Canada. We went, you know, out one night down into Reykjavik to explore. Uh, when we had the off day the next day just to have to really enjoy the culture which was awesome like i loved iceland it was cold and dark and freezing yeah, but I'm i could see i could see how amazing that country is and i was actually really bummed i didn't get that opportunity there because uh i think it's just a cool it'd be a cool you know place to stay and a place to live i think i mean it looked i really enjoyed it there uh i remember when you were flying back i, I specifically remember this one text and you said like I've watched the sunrise like three times or something or sunset because you to fly back, you just kind of fly right around like the. Oh, yeah, it was it was. Yeah, because afterwards I flew back, but I had like a four hour sunset because I was flying along the Arctic yeah, you circle were like following like the sunset. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. Um, but I was but I also had like a little moment over in Iceland where I was like getting lonely 
and like having a little bit of like you're there for 10 days i know that's what i'm saying <laughs> and, and well that was what scared me is like the same thing for you of like oh my yeah. gosh she's gonna be in iceland i was kind of like oh my gosh i'm away from all of we my college both friends simultaneously crying in different parts of i the wasn't world. crying i wasn't a wuss <laughs> but it was all about like i just kind of thinking about like that was when i first really realized that wow this professional life i mean you're kind of just inside cooped up away from all your friends yep. and family even now yeah <laughs> seriously so can you not kill me yeah it was uh it was definitely a very cool experience and i definitely i would love to go i, could, I would love especially now with my experience to go back go. and play first division there like oh, that you would be play. I like travel. no i want to play there i think that'd be cool um but we'll see. You never know how, like I said, you follow the opportunities. You don't just be like throw a dart at a map and be like, okay, that's where I'm going. You mm -hmm. follow the opportunities. Um, the only mistake I really made is that my agent, my agent said uh, that he had an opportunity for me in the third division because I was trialing with Throcher in the second division. He said I could stay there for another week and trial with the team in the third division. And I told him no because I wanted to try again with Sacramento and I want to try back in the USL which I don't know if, if it was the right decision it's hard to say like what is third division Iceland like equivalent to it's to, I mean I, I didn't actually go so I really don't know but even for the second division I was a little kind of like yeah it's definitely pro like I mean the, you have pro contracts there it's a good league there's really quality players but like I think we were training three or four times a week it, it's not like the fully professional setup that I was really looking for mm -hmm. or wanted but again I, I was naive I, I really didn't know well maybe we would have ended up somewhere different yeah so it's, it's kind of interesting I wonder what would and then what's funny is Jordan I think stayed Jordan Tyler the guy who I who was the one they chose because I remember they only chose one foreigner so they actually they two. actually didn't choose any of us. There was a oh. different foreigner somewhere else. Um, but Jordan stayed and he went to a third division team and he ended up playing in Iceland for like two or three years. So I, I followed him on Instagram, like watching Where him play in Iceland. Well, he tore his ACL and he was back here. And now I think he was trying, I talked to him actually like a year ago or a few months ago and he was trying to re-enter back into the USL because I think the USL is a, a better league than I the- I bet you would have just ended up in the same place. Even yeah. if you did play. The it's interesting to think about. Um, but anyway, I came back home and I was really set on trying to make it work with Sacramento. And, and now I was like, I'll do anything. I'll do open tryouts. I'll do whatever. So I got back home and I signed up for an open tryout, which you pay for, which I know is not high quality, but I paid for one with Portland Timbers too. And I paid I for one. I was there for that one. You were there. You were actually there for I this one. I was actually there. And I bought one for Vancouver Whitecaps too. So this was like the first weekend of March and the second weekend of March, I think. So I was mm -hmm. like back to back. I'm like, okay, this is like my last chance because Sacramento wasn't getting back to me. Oklahoma City had pretty much said they weren't interested anymore after sending me those awesome emails of letting me come in and everything. So I was like, this is my last chance. And then I guess I have to go and play PDL again and then retry again this next year. So I was, a, I, I was pretty scared. Um, Portland Timbers too. You were there. You were up in Portland. Did you just fly out for that weekend or what weekend was it? It was like beginning of March. It might've been your spring break or something. I was going to say, I thought it was Valentine's day. No, it was way past Valentine's day. Spring break. Yeah. I flew there for like, I was there for a while. I think you might've just came up for the weekend or something. I don't know. All I remember is that game. Okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> Mimi, Mimi was there. Why am I here? <laughs> <laughs> we played in the uh, Portland Timbers, the Providence Park, Their the stadium. stadium. I remember that. Uh, and and, and we, again, I watched. Yeah, it's just, again, it was just a normal weekend thing. It was like 100, 200 bucks or something. Sign up, and you basically get to try out with a whole bunch of other trialists. Not trialists. You can't call them trialists. Just random people that wanted to, to sign up and play. And again, the quality is very, very low very low mm -hmm. a lot of people that shouldn't you know have no business trying for a pro team or out there trying which makes it hard you can stand out and i felt like pretty obviously there was like three or four guys that probably were right at the professional level or right there you know um but again i thought i killed i thought that portland timbers trial i killed it but nothing no that's what, that's what i thought too i was like so confused yeah i was like scoring goals i was doing really well yeah. i felt like i was I thought I did really, really well. But again, like, it's okay. Like, they, you never know about how their team's situated. Some coaches situated. just can't recognize talent. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you never know how their team's situated. You never know. Maybe in my head, I thought I did really well. And they were like, no, this kid doesn't have this aspect that we're looking for or whatever. They saw you were too good. No. Um, but yeah, so that didn't work out there. I didn't get any callback, even for the U23 team no callback for the u23 yeah. team no callback for their 
Portland Timbers two team. So I'll, again, a little disheartening, a little bummed out. Now I got one more opportunity uh, before I have to pretty much commit to playing uh, PDL again for another year. And this time it was with the Vancouver Whitecaps too. So again, I drove all the way up to Vancouver, which is like a five, six hour drive from Oregon. I was all the way up in Vancouver. I booked a hotel room, stayed up in Vancouver. I think my dad actually came with me again. Um, I was there, had a really, this is my best. Again, each trial is getting like better and better now because of all the experience. And I played, I killed it at this trial. And they did the, specifically they did the like 40 yard dash time and I killed it. I was like one of the fastest ones there. Or I think the fastest time there. And then- They must have had like a lot of slow people there. They did because it's an open trial. So there's a <laughs> lot of bad and slow people. <laughs> I know it wasn't, I mean, there, again, when you, go, when you go to these open tryouts, if there's a hundred kids there, I'd say 60 of them are not even at the collegiate level. I was trying to insult you. I know, but I turned um, it around. I was like, what do you, how did you do that? <laughs> I'd say 60 of, if there's a hundred people there, 60 of them are probably not even at the collegiate level. Then 30 of them might be like semi-pro collegiate mid-range players. And then there's about 10 of people who are guys who could play pro. And so, you know, you kind of like quickly find the other guys who could play pro and you kind of talk to them like, hey, where have you been? Where are you playing? And they're like, you know, you guys like, yeah, I was over playing second division in Sweden and I was over doing this. So mm-hmm. yeah, actually, you know, was just playing in the USL for this team. So you kind of like form a little bond, uh, which is kind of funny. But again, I, I thought it did really well. I mean, a couple other guys that you kind of identify as like, oh, this guy's good. This guy's good, you know, and they actually brought in out of the like, the, I thought there's like five or six really good guys. They brought in like three from this open trial and said that we could come back and uh, and join them, the Vancouver Whitecaps too for preseason. Now it's hard because you never know how much of this is a publicity stunt to like, oh yeah, we brought in three guys from our last open trial to hype up the next one, you know? Yeah, to show but, that the trials would work. But again, if uh, it was like 300 people there or so, I think it was 150, 200, I don't remember, but they brought in three and I was one of the three. So I said, even if this is a publicity stunt, I'm still in their eyes, top three out of this whole combine, you know? Mm-hmm. So I kept on telling myself like, look, I'm not delusional that I'm, I'm not out here thinking I'm great. And reality, everybody's looking at me like this guy sucks, you know? Yeah. So that was good. Um, and the preseason for them started that next the following week, I think it was like three or four day gap. So I pretty much just kind of like waited. I just hung out in Vancouver. My dad was there. So we just kind of like, chilled in the hotel room. I remember I was watching Game of Thrones like season three or something, watching that, hanging out in the hotel room. We were walking around Vancouver. I love Vancouver. It's such a cool city. So I've been there. It's awesome. Love it. And it was even in the winter. I still loved it there. And it, cause it wasn't even that cold. It's like very Pacific Northwest, like yeah, mild. I I it's really not like, like it. Ottawa, like 10 feet of snow. Uh, but it was very, very cool. And then I joined them in on their very first week of training with the White Caps too. You get the full Vancouver Whitecaps 2 kit, you know, you're all dressed up. You feel, I was so excited. Uh, and again, I thought I did well in preseason. Like I definitely wasn't like, wow, like these guys are good. I'm nowhere near it. I was like, okay, yeah, I think I'm holding my own. And that first week there was 33 guys in the, in the, in the, yeah, in the preseason. This. And then on the end of the week, this is just shows how cold blooded it is in the pro game. The coaches basically after you were there for a week, me- making friends, talking to the coaches, talking to the players, they basically said like, okay, uh, thank you guys. Good first week of training. We put up a list in the locker room. If your name is not on the list, do not come back. And I was like, what? <laughs> You're so dead like, to me. So I was like, okay. But I thought, you know what? 33 guys. I was like, hopefully they'll cut like five. And I think I'm, and I thought it was like mid middle of the pack. Yeah. And uh, go into the locker room. The list is 15 names, 15 names out of 33 players. So they cut now in that first week, they cut like, what is that? More 18? than 50, 50%. Yeah. They cut 18 players after the first week. And I remember guys even talking about like, they're saying like, what? Like what? Why is the list so short? And so guys were kind of mad. Uh, but again, I mean, it's the second division or uh, the second team of MLS team. So they knew that a lot of MLS players were going to be dropping down and playing. And obviously my name wasn't on the list. So you kind of like scroll through. You don't see your name. Then you're like, maybe I missed it. You go back up yeah. to the top. <laughs> nope. Did I spell my name wrong? Yeah. That's weird. Aiden Brown. That's not, that's not that's my. A weird way to spell that's Matt weird, Sheldon. That's a weird way to spell <laughs> Matt Sheldon. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I was pretty bummed at that point. And that was like, kind of like the nail in the coffin of like, that was my last opportunity that I had. And mm-hmm. so now I was back 
to square one again. All of the opportunities I had fallen out or I went on the trials and it didn't work out. So I was pretty bummed. I remember going back home and I drove all the way back home to Portland. I was pretty upset. Uh, but again, I was like, okay, whatever. I'll take a couple of days, you know, refuel, get back. And then, um, we'll start emailing teams again, just start back again. And I sent out the email to Sacramento, but I worded it in a really good way. I just said, Hey, I, I actually kind of lied a little bit to, to grant. It was like one of the GM, the GM of Sacramento Republic. I said, Hey, uh, I'm in preseason right now with Vancouver Whitecaps too which wasn't entirely untrue because I was there. You technically were. I was there, but I just made it sound like I was still there. I said, hey, Grant, I just was like, hey, I'm still, still in, pre, I'm in preseason right now with Vancouver Whitecaps too. It's going great out here. Uh, I don't, you know, there's a lot of guys out here. I don't know how many are going to stick out for the actually be on the team, but I just want to let you know, keep you updated and uh, I just want to stay in contact. And he messaged me right back like, Matt, awesome to hear that you're up at Vancouver. You know, best of luck up there. If it doesn't work out, let me know. I'm like, I will. And then you wait, I wait, wait 30 minutes. No, I, <laughs> it looks like I got cut. <laughs> I waited, I waited like two or three days. And then I sent another text. I'm like, hey, Graham, uh, Unfortunately, I ended up getting cut. Now I'm back in, uh, back in Sac. I actually lied again. I said I'm back in Sacramento. <laughs> Hopefully, Graham's not watching. I know, this. <laughs> I know. Thanks, Graham. <laughs> but I mean, it was again. It's like I'm just kind of like stretching a yeah, little you just bit. Stretch. And truth. so I said, Hey, I'm actually back in Sacramento uh, now. But I was really in Portland with my family. Back in Sacramento. Uh, is there any opportunity for me to come out there and, and trial with Sacramento? He's like, Matt, give me a couple of days and we'll figure it out. And that's when I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm actually going to just buy a ticket down to Sacramento. So I'm not lying oh, as much. <laughs> so I booked a ticket down to so Sacramento. You did that because I was there. Huh? So you did that because I was, it was there. It was two things. I wanted to surprise you to be back in Sacramento. That's when you surprised me. It was. That scared me really bad. Yeah. yeah I surprised Mimi. I basically hopped the fence because this is back in my old college house that you were staying at. So I hopped the fence, got back in my old room. and Just then shows how secure the house was. I know. I, bet you don't. I remember I got out of the shower and I walk into my room and you're just sitting on the bed. And I thought you were in like Canada or Iceland or something. <laughs> and I, it was the weirdest thing. I was like. Yeah. So then I surprised you. And then again, it was like, I'll be with me for a bit. So even if it doesn't work out for, um, with Sacramento Republic, at least I can be, see you again. And then I'll, I'll kind of, I said I would train with the, the Davis guys, train with some D one players mm-hmm. as well. And then I'll, I'll reevaluate, see what I'm going to do as the next steps. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, it ended up, Graham got back to me and said, Hey Matt, we would love to have you out here for a two day trial with the Republic. And this was like now end of March or something. They're already done with preseason. They're just now heading into the regular season. And so I joined them for a two day trial and um, it went really, really well. I had a really, I had a decent first day, but the second day we did like an exhibition scrimmage type game against a college team, I think. And I did, I felt like I had a really good like showing and I had a couple crosses whipped in, did really well. And they were like, you know what, Matt, come back for the rest of the week. So I was like, Okay, cool. And then that rest of the week turned into another week. So then it turned into like a two week trial. And then at the end of the two weeks, Precky, the head coach there was like, Matt, look, I like, I like you as a player. I think you have some things to work on. I think technically you need to like sharpen up technically. I think that you're very athletic. You have a very good, you have a lot of potential, but I just see you right now. I don't see you coming in and like really starting or playing for me. So I'm not going to offer you a contract. And I was like, okay, I, I appreciate the feedback. I'm like, right now I'm actually just training. I would just be training with Davis guys. Is there any way that I could just come out here and continue to train until I figure out my next step? And he goes, yeah, for sure. Keep coming out, keep training with us. So I was like, okay. And then, you know, week after week, I kept on coming back out. Uh, and then they, Graham and the guys at the Republic were like, look, if you're going to train with us, we want you to play with our affiliate team the Ventura, Ventura County Fusion. So their affiliate semi-pro team mm-hmm. was all the way down in Ventura, which is a five and a half, six hour drive along the I-5 all through the middle of California. Where there's nothing. So th- throughout these next three months from April, May, or actually it was like April, May, June, July. So like those four months, every single Monday through Friday, I would train with the Republic every single day, full professional training. And then after the Friday training, I would go back home to D- to Davis uh, there, read like shower or like would shower at Republic and stuff. But I would get back home, 
pick up some other stuff, get all ready. And then I would drive five and a half hours all the way down to Ventura. I would stay in the apartments with the Ventura County Fusion guys for that Friday night. Sometimes, or you drive back right after. No, no, no. You're getting ahead of, again, Friday, game would be Saturday. So Friday night, I would stay there. Saturday, you'd hang out, kind of go, you know, rest, hang out with the guys, playing the game on Saturday night. And then I would always drive all the way back right after the game on Saturday, all the way back into Davis. And I'd get back into Davis about 3 a.m. <laughs> Gucci. Um, but yeah, so every single week for the next four months, I was doing that every single weekend, making it 11 that, hour. You woke me up every Saturday night. Yep. 11 hour round trip all the way back to, to LA pretty much. And then all the way back up to Sacramento and I was exhausted. And then I would take Sunday and I would sleep in till like noon on Sunday. I would just rest all Sunday and I would get back to it on, on that next Monday with the Republic. That was like the most tiring taxing time I've ever felt. And then I also was like, you know what? I should re-enroll in school and I should start become elite and I should start all this. So that was a very busy time. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, do you, do you remember like every night, like on Saturday night or I'd yeah, come strolling I'd go to in. bed at like 10 or 11 and then you'd be there in the morning. Yeah. Um, and, but then, I mean, so many good things came out of it. I really took Preki's advice of like, look, you need to sharpen up technically. So I was doing a ton of technical work. I would go train with Republic. And a lot of the times I would go back to, um, Davis and I would get an, a, a second session where I was just first touch work passing against a wall. And that's where the idea of like, oh, I should kind of like start to film some of these drills and post it to Instagram. And that's where Become Elite really started and everything. Full circle. Full circle. Is that when I convinced you to take an accounting class with me? Mm-hmm. Yep. Worst decision of my life. Aren't you glad that you did that? Yeah. I, Mimi was like, yeah, come and take, you know, you should just re-enroll in school and get like another, you know, eight credits, credits out of the way. Um, and you can do the accounting with me. And I'm like, I don't want to study. I don't, I'm done with school. I don't want to do it. And you're like, Oh no, no, I'll help you. Like I'll get, I'll, I'll help you. I'll help you do all the homework. And then I do it. And then I end up helping you with all the homework. <laughs> My plan worked. Yeah. So I actually liked it a lot. Like I liked I knew, that. Math. I knew it was a Shelly class. Like mm -hmm. I knew that it you was. didn't, wouldn't want to take it, but you were totally interested because it's all finance and accounting. So yeah. So I, I mean, I did well. Uh, I, mean, I like that class. But then also during that time, like over the summer months of 2015, um, I think your lease was up now or the lease was up in that house. So I had to move into um, the the other guy's yeah. Anderson house. So I was sleeping now on a mattress in my friend's kitchen. So every morning I'd flip up the mattress and move the kitchen table back to where it was supposed to be. And every night I would move the kitchen table out and flip the mattress back down and sleep there. So, oh, you got Gucci on your lap. But yeah, so that was a very, it was cool. It was a fun time because it was very like, I'm all in. Like, I don't, I don't have any possessions. I don't have a rent. I think I was paying my friend like a hundred bucks a month um, to do this. So it was, it was interesting time what were your thoughts tell i'm gonna restart these cameras again but can you give your thoughts on like my life trajectory at that point going from dropping out of school and now i'm living on a mattress in my friend's apartment i was starting an instagram page for become elite like i didn't have much really going for me yeah do you have to restart something yeah so while i restart this talk oh. about that well while you're going yeah at that point i realized um maybe i should find someone with a future? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, I just, the whole, the whole thing just made me realize like how, first of all, like how brutal the soccer industry is, how every relationship with every person in the soccer world is all political and it's all just like cutthroat. Yeah. Like you can't have emotions, you can't have feelings. You just have, it's like business. That, that's like what I learned the most during that time was like soccer is a business. Yeah. So I'm like, why wouldn't they pick you? That's so mean. <laughs> like what? they have you there for like a couple of days and they just cut you. And you're like, yeah, it's a business. Like they look at us like assets, you know? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I wasn't worried at all. Dur I mean, it's really hard for me to remember, but I don't think I was worried at all that like you wouldn't find a team. I never felt like that. I was always like, I was worried. <laughs> well, yeah, but I wasn't because like I knew how hard you worked and I knew that like you weren't going to give up. And I was like, how could all these other people make it pro and not you? Like, 
it just didn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? I'm like, I know it'll happen. Like, how would it not <laughs> happen for you if it happens for other people? You oh, know? just blind support. Thank I'm you. Not blind. Oh no, I meant that in like a good thing. Like a lot of support. Yeah, but you think I'm biased. You are definitely biased. I mean, some of your biased. some of your comments in here aren't even biased. No, Mimi, Mimi's always been very supportive and a little bit biased. Like even points where it's like, Never. okay, another right back might be starting over me. And honestly, like to be 100 percent fair, I'm like, yeah, that right back's no. doing pretty well. I think he should probably start that game like in the week of training Mimi's always like no you're better no, no you're better <laughs> it actually pisses me off and I'm like no Mimi he's had a really good couple weeks of training like I honestly like unbiased I think he I'm, either of us can start and I think I have I'm 100% confident in myself but I think he honestly kind of outperformed me this the last couple weeks so but I appreciate I appreciate the support you're welcome <laughs> well yeah at the beginning like I said, like I was crying about Iceland. Towards the end, I was like, fuck it. Like, I don't even, you know what I mean? Like I learned to just not get invested mm -hmm. emotionally, mentally, like to anything yeah. really. Yeah. Until, you know, cause there's just no point. Like even if you have a trial somewhere, you're in preseason, like don't get invested. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I learned that as well. Like, I mean, I had so such high hopes, like imagining my life in Iceland, imagining my life in Oklahoma City, imagining it like, like just like getting a little bit ahead of myself. And again, like you kind of realize like, again, don't get too high on the highs, don't get too low on the lows, yeah. ride it out, play your game, be confident wherever you go. And, you know, hopefully things will work out. Um, but again, I mean, that time though, with Sacramento starting to become elite, doing the online classes, living on a mattress in the apartment, like that was tough. Like, I mean, it was exciting and fun. It was very fun. I was with my friends. I was with you. I was training with a pro team. So it was all very exciting stuff. I don't think you were on the mattress yet. Well, so, I mean, towards the end of th that summer, I moved to the mattress. I think it was like when you went home to California. Yeah, because I was, because we were together in the house for yeah. the classes. So okay, it, yeah, so it's, it's around there. But I'm all, I'm like, right now I'm in the summer. I'm doing my yeah. year. But right now I'm in the summer. Uh, if you guys the are posting, circle, the, the circle of the circle year. The circle of the kill months. me. Um, all right, well, this podcast has already been over an hour. Uh, yeah, let me sum up. So, um, I want you to sum up without using your hands. Okay. I have noticed in this podcast how much you talk with your hands. I know, I'm such Gucci a hand. Because follows it too. She thinks you're like playing with her. I'm such a hand talker. I want to see if you can like end the podcast okay, without okay. using I'll, your hands. I'll send, my, I'll send my hands. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, over the summer months now, like I, I've been training every day with the Republic. It is very hard to be a training player. It's very hard to be a practice player with the team because you don't feel like you're part of the team. I never felt like I was part of Sacramento Republic. Aww. It was like nothing to the, like the team or anything. Those All the guys were great. So nice to me. I learned a ton. But like, you're, you really aren't part of the team. I, I wasn't a, a player on the team. I was yeah. just a training player that showed up. Um, and just then basically, loser. yeah, just a loser. But I did get into one exhibition game. So it was like in July or August, I think. We, they had one exhibition game, mid-season exhibition game against Atlas. And I got in there. I asked Preki. I was like, hey, Preki, can I get like 45 minutes? You know, the second half. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and so that was my first time really in a pro setting. That's where I took that photo. Yeah, that's where I got like the I played. In, I played photo. in front of the ten thousand fans. It was a, a very, very cool experience. I said, you know what? Even if I never signed somewhere, because I was starting to see how hard it really is and how much harder it was than I thought. But I really was like, at least I got this experience of playing in front of ten thousand fans with the the beat of the drum, like where you can basically feel the bass yeah. in your chest. You can't even hear your teammate five feet apart. I'm talking with my hands. You can't even hear your See? teammate. I'm going to talk with my head. You can't even hear your teammate five feet away from you. It was a very, very cool experience. And I said, if I never signed pro, at least I got this experience in, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, so, so it was cool. And I also played then a couple of weeks later, I played in the game against the U 17 national team against Mexico. And that was the game where I scored and did well. And that was in front of like five, 6,000 fans. It was fans. like the buzzer shot. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, was like right in the 92nd minute or so. Yeah. Uh, but it was cool. Uh, and so I, I kind of felt like I was getting some cool experience of playing in front of thousands of fans, like not getting paid to play yet, but like right on the verge. And I was like confident with myself. Um, pretty much finished out the summer with Republic. Uh, and then right as they're heading into playoffs, I'm talking to my hands, I can see you looking. But right as I was heading into the playoffs with the Republic, the Preki pretty much came. Actually, it was a new coach. Paul Buckle and he basically said, look, um, we're going to focus on the guys on the team now. So there's like three other, there's three practice players, three training players. And he said, you guys 
stop showing up. We really appreciate you. And I basically talked to him after training. I said, um, what are my chances of coming back next year and, and earning a spot on the team? And he said, look, we think you could come back in and join preseason, but we can't offer you a contract right now. And so I said, okay. And that's when I hit up uh, Matt Atencio and my other like mentor, pretty much Marcus Batelt, Batelt um, who were just like, Matt was an old coach of mine and Marcus was like a new friend that I had met through Matt. And I pretty much said, look, I'm, I want to go over to Germany. They were kind of like asking me if I was ever, whenever I was ready, whenever I wanted to go over to Germany and pursue that option, that it was there for me. And so once I kind of like exhausted my opportunities in America and exhausted everything I felt like I could get for myself, I said, okay, yeah, I w- let's go over. Cause I knew it was going to be hard to get a visa. I knew it was going to be tough to go abroad. It's always more tough to be international. Like I experienced in Iceland. So I kind of knew it was going to be more difficult. But at that point I was like, look, I'll go in this off season. If it doesn't work out, I'll come back into the U S and I'll give the USL another go that next year. Uh, so that's when I, uh, I, I was done with the Republic. I left, I went over to Tennessee for a bit to train with Brent Goulet, this, this great coach out there in, in Nashville, Tennessee. He also had played over in like second division or third division Germany. So he was like helping me, giving me some tips, training me, doing some stuff and also evaluating me to basically kind of give his input on what level he thought I could play over there. And uh, yeah, it was, you know, that's when I kind of like was like really preparing now individual training, ramping up with become elite and getting ready to go over to Germany. And that's when the Germany podcast came in. So yeah, that was like a very difficult, very crazy time in my life, bouncing around, experiencing a lot of rejections, experiencing a lot of uh, experiencing how hard the pro game really is Mm -hmm. to break into and experiencing how cutthroat it really was. And I think that no one really understands how hard it is, even for someone who's uh, done really well at the division one college level, how tough it is to really make that transition to the pro game. Um, And I think you have to experience it for yourself or don't or don't. But you know, what's funny too is sometimes I talk to teammates and their transition from college to the pro game is so easy. Like, yeah, you know, I, they literally like, for example, like I had one teammate who's like, yeah, I, uh, I had this, I, you know, as soon as my season end, ended and I had an agent like that hit him up, you know, mm-hmm. talked to the agent agents like, yeah, I got a trial for you at Orange County Blues. And then he goes to Orange County Blues for preseason and they sign him. <laughs> and I'm like, dang, like that it's, I wish my path was that, that easy. But at the same time, I think all that struggle also really helped a lot. Mm-hmm. All right, well, thanks for sitting and listening to me talk, Mimi. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, is there anything like that you remember from that time or anything else you want to add into it? Or are you, are you done with the podcast? You want to move on? I want to move on. Okay. Well, thank you guys very much for listening. Once again, thank you to Ebenel Skincare for sponsoring this episode of the down. podcast. Oops, it's upside down. For sponsoring this episode of the podcast. If you guys are interested, once again, use the, our discount code against... 10 that's the number one and zero uh for a little discount from your order other than that thanks for listening to me talk i hope you guys learned something or hope that gave you some good insight into that step that i went from college to the pro game and uh yeah thank you for listening anything else nope hi guys see you in the next one peace peace <laughs>